listening to this documentary exploring the legend of San Maurice and his companions in Europe. Our journey starts off at Gatwick Airport where we boarded a flight to Geneva International from where we rented a car and made our way driving to the small town of San Maurice located between the French and Italian borders on the Alpine range. On the way there we stopped by at Lake Geneva to absorb the sights but as you can see once that was done we hopped back into the car and continued our journey onto the town of San Maurice. The town of St. Maurice is built on the ancient Roman town of Agemnum, which is very close to a pass in the Rhone Valley that served strategic importance not only in Roman times, but also during the medieval period as well. There are Coptic crosses all over the town harking back to the Egyptian heritage of the Theban Legion. Once we arrived at the Abbey of San Maurice, it was hard not to take in the 1500 year plus tradition it preserves, centered around the martyrdom of San Maurice and the Theban Legion. The legend of San Maurice is captured beautifully in stained glass around the Abbey. The first one shows him and the Theban Legion in their Coptic devotion to Christ before embarking in the second one on their voyage from Thebes to Europe. After arriving in northern Italy, St. Maurice and the 6,600 strong Theban Legion were ordered to march up to Switzerland to quash a Gallic rebellion, but then refused the order from the soon to be Emperor Maximian to execute the civilians and worship idols. On hearing this, Maximian rode down to Octodrum, which was the Rhone Valley Pass next to Agemnum, and ordered Saint Maurice and the Theban Legion that were stationed at Agemnum to meet him there, where after further refusals, he ended up martyring them. The third century martyrdom of the Theban Legion was recorded in detail by Saint Eucharist in the Martyrs of Agamemnon. The Feast of Saint Maurice is celebrated every year on the 22nd of September, which we were present for, and the day starts off at 5am with a big loud wake-up call. <laughs> Woken up, a mass is held at 7 a.m. at one of the archaeological sites of San Maurice's burials. Priant pour l'Église, pour toute la communauté des croyants, qu'elle reste aux premières lignes dans le combat pour la justice, pour la vérité, pour la charité, à l'exemple de San Maurice et des compagnons. Dieu de tendresse, écoute-nous. En ce jour de fête patronale, prions pour toutes nos festivités, pour les croyants, les incroyants, les malcroyants de chez nous, afin que nous travaillions ensemble 
pour que des relations de justice, de vérité et de paix s'épanouissent dans le monde. Dieu de tendresse, écoute-nous. Pour nous-mêmes et pour tous ceux que nous aimons, que le témoignage de Saint Maurice et de ses compagnons nous fasse grandir intérieurement et nous aide dans les difficultés de nos chemins. Dieu de tendresse, écoute-nous. Seigneur, appuyé sur le témoignage de Saint Maurice et de ses compagnons, nous te prions avec confiance, sûr que tu nous écoutes, accueille et que tu accueilles nos prières par Jésus, le Christ, notre Sauveur. Amen. The Mass is held with the altar placed directly in front of where Saint Maurice was buried in the 9th century. In the 9th century, his burial place was placed directly under the altar of the 9th century abbey, as you can see here. The 9th century tomb of Saint Maurice was rediscovered in 1904 during an archaeological dig of the old abbey. This chapel marks the site at Octodrum where Saint Maurice and the Theban Legion met the soon to be Emperor Maximian and were martyred. It's a 10 minute walk away from the abbey at Agemnum and marks the site in the Rhone Valley at Octodrum where the Theban Legion met their end. Prayer and vigils are often held at the Chapel of Saint Maurice where the stone which was either used for the beheading of Saint Maurice or as a tombstone for his grave can be found. Underneath this chapel you can find the catacombs where the relics of Saint Maurice and the Theban Legion were discovered only a few decades after their martyrdom in 380 AD. They were excavated by Bishop Theodol, who after excavating the relics moved them to Roman catacombs built at Agemnum, and a church was built on this site. In 515 AD, Saint Sigismund founded the Abbey of Saint Maurice at the church, inaugurating a 1500 year tradition of perpetual worship that continues to this day, which you can even hear as the backing music to this video. The current basilica on the grounds of the abbey dates back to the 17th century. It replaced an earlier basilica that had been built below the cliffs of St. Maurice and was damaged by a rock slide in 1611. The current basilica in the square is adjoined to an 11th century tower. Both these buildings are right next to the archaeological remains of the 4th and 6th and 9th century abbeys that were also built on the site next to the cliff. Prior to the church and the abbey being built on the site, it served in existence as a necropolis dedicated to Roman nymph goddesses. And the Roman tombs have even been excavated as you can see here. A mausoleum accompanied the necropolis dedicated to pagan gods built prior to the arrival of the Theban Legion. This was converted into the first church around the 4th century and a baptisserie was built at this time to allow pilgrims to be baptised. The site was then rebuilt as a bigger abbey by King Sigismund in 515. The abbey had some additions made to it in the 8th century, but then it was completely rebuilt and redesigned in the 9th century, with the altar being placed on the east side of the abbey and the tomb of Saint Maurice being placed underneath it. A steeple was also added in the 11th century, which survives to this day. We'll start off this section on the treasures of the abbey with this arm reliquary of Saint Maurice from the 15th century. This jug from the 9th century is supposedly from either Charlemagne or his grandson Charles the Bald. This vase belonged to Saint Martin of Tours, who was supposedly in the field of martyrs when he stuck his knife into the ground and blood emerged. He was then given this vase by an angel to collect the blood. This centre cup was also donated by Charlemagne, who visited the abbey twice in his lifetime. 
This reliquary holds a thorn from Christ's crown, which was gifted to the abbot of St. Maurice from King Louis IX in thanks for sending relics of St. Maurice. This is a reliquary bust of St. Candidus, who fought together with St. Maurice as a Roman legionnaire. The bust from 1165 has a Latin inscription which says although Candidus was sacrificed by the sword, his spirit reached the heavens. In exchange for violent death, he received life. This ring used by the House of Savoy in the 1250s was reported to be of St. Maurice. These eight reliquies are obelisk shaped because they hold the relics of the other members of the Theban legion that were found in the valley at Verolie. And lastly, in preparation for the rest of the day's ceremonies, we have the three shrines of Saint Natalmus, Saint Sigismund and Saint Maurice at the back. We'll now end the documentary here with some footage of the Feast of St. Maurice, but it's worth noting that only 550 of the 6,600 Theban Legion were stationed at Agemnum. Other members of the Theban Legion were stationed across modern day Switzerland, Germany, France and Italy, and a lot of them did not escape martyrdom, including St. Ursus, St. Victor, St. Felix, St. Regula and St. Zumperantus which we may follow up with further documentaries of their stories.